Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film. Annabelle comes home. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren bringing home the super ugly Annabelle doll after two nurses claim that the doll often performed violent activities in their apartment. A police officer directs them to another exit as there's an accident along their route. While Ed maneuvers the car, Lorraine sees a woman's ghost staring at the accident. The car engine sputters while they're on the way to the exit, and soon enough, the car stops in the middle of the road. While Ed checks the engine, Lorraine notices that they have stopped in front of a cemetery. She returns her gaze to the front when she suddenly hears a woman's voice coming from the backseat telling her that she likes the doll. Lorraine talks to her through the rearview mirror, informing her that she was the woman who died in the car accident. Their conversation gets quickly interrupted when Ed accidentally honks the car through the wires. The woman has vanished, but Lorraine sees more spirits looking at her from the cemetery. As Ed closes the hood, Lorraine sees a dozen more spirits behind him, one of which suddenly pushes him into the road. Lorraine immediately goes out, while Ed narrowly saves himself from an oncoming truck. The driver quickly apologizes and explains that he suddenly lost control. However, Lorraine informs Ed that the doll is a beacon for other spirits. So they rush back home and put Annabelle in a blessed glass to ensure the evil is contained. A year later, the Warrens warmly welcome their daughter, Mary, back home to babysit their little kid, Judy. They are leaving overnight to investigate another paranormal case. Mary drives Judy to her school, and during her break time, Judy sees the spirit of a priest staring at her. She remains calm, wears her hoodie, and holds the crucifix in her bag. Mary and her friend Daniela argue in the grocery store as Daniela is interested in what the Warrens do for a living, and she wants to stay over at their house. Mary refuses first, but gives in shortly after, because Daniela threatens to tell Mary's doing babysitting to her crush, Bob, who coincidentally works in the checkout. However, Daniela still reveals it to Bob as soon as Mary rushes out of the store. Later that day, Mary saves Judy from getting bullied further because of her parents' profession. Judy sees the priest still following her as the hallway slowly gets emptied. She dismisses it and comes home with Mary, where they prepare to bake her birthday cake. Shortly after, Daniela comes in through the back door, and she quickly snoots around like it's her house. Judy explains that the bell informs a human if they're in the presence of a spirit. Daniela wants to go to the artifact room, but Mary and Judy tell her no and warn her not to go there. Daniela drops the subject and gives Judy a pair of roller skates as a birthday present. After that, she convinces Mary to go outside and play with Judy. Mary reminds her not to snoop around, and she leaves with Judy. While they're gone, Daniela attempts to get into the artifact room, but discovers it's securely locked. She even contacts the spirits inside to let her come in, but the door won't budge. As she can't get in, Daniela continues snooping around in the home office, and ironically finds the keys to the artifact room, behind a picture frame of Jesus Christ. Daniela finally gets in, thanks to the keys, and she immediately begins exploring, touching every artifact. After staining her hands with the dirt, Daniela takes a photograph of her late father and attempts to contact him. This reveals that she's not just a curious teenager, but she has wanted to get into the Warren's artifact room to be with her dad. After noticing no sign at all, Daniela walks away when she hears a thud. She looks back and finds that the Annabelle doll has moved. Despite the huge warning on the glass, Daniela unlocks it, thinking it's her dad attempting to communicate. She quickly returns the Annabelle doll inside the glass and leaves in a hurry after hearing the fire alarm beeping. Because of her panic, Daniela forgets to unlock the glass, unleashing the evil. Daniela is already in the kitchen when Mary returns, but Judy is out, feeding the chickens. Daniela comes out to the small barn, and Judy shares how the kids in her class are scared to be near her and her family. It turns out, her big bully is Daniela's brother. Daniela tells her not to take it seriously, because it has been a tough year for them. With this, Judy knows that they lost somebody, confusing Daniela because Judy denies that Mary told her anything. Meanwhile, Mary keeps the front door locked when she hears the continuous ringing of the bell, followed by banging on it. She looks through the peephole and finds no one outside. Just as she walks away, she hears a little girl's voice, asking if Annabelle's in there. Mary opens the door and informs the little girl that she has the wrong house, because there's no Annabelle. The girl insists that there is, and she's right behind Mary. This prompts her to look back, but there's no one, and when she returns her gaze up front, the little girl is gone. Mary dismisses this and joins the two in the barn, where she witnesses Daniela comforting Judy about how their family gave her hope. Just then, Daniela sees an apparition of what seems to be her dad, looking at her from the back glass door. 
This prompts her to return to the house, and she cannot help but be emotional as she looks for her dad. Mary and Juhi return too, confused by Daniela's sudden actions. While Mary follows Daniela downstairs, Judy goes upstairs after seeing a silhouette pass by. She follows the creaking sound, leading to a room where she finds the Annabelle doll sitting on a rocking chair. When the door swings back and she opens it again, the doll has disappeared. When she turns around, she finds a note underneath the bed saying, Miss me. Seconds after that, the terror begins. The side door rattles and the cross turns upside down, followed by the wind howling, indistinct whispering and rumbling. She watches in fear as the bride passes by and raises her hand, holding a knife. The bride then starts thumping toward her, so Judy quickly holds the cross up and hides her face. The two hear her screams, so Mary quickly runs to her and finds her muttering a prayer, still holding the cross and hiding her face. After seeing that the bride has gone, Judy calms down. She confesses to Mary that she's gifted just like her mom. She sees them everywhere, and she sometimes gets scared, depending on what kind of a ghost she sees. After comforting Judy, Mary returns to the office, where Daniela tells her about the ferryman. It's a case that Ed and Lorraine investigated who is a dark spirit that takes souls to the afterlife for a price. Daniela snoops around the Warren's case files and reads about the Black Shuck, a demonic hellhound that kills humans and animals. The two then talk about the ferryman, because they don't know the purpose of the coins over the eyes. Judy then comes in and explains that the coins are the payment for the ferryman, so he can take their souls to the underworld. Daniela shows a picture to Judy and asks what it is. Judy informs her that it's the mourner's bracelet that can help people contact their lost loved ones. They open another file about the wedding dress, which haunts and makes people violent. When Mary asks where the wedding dress is, Daniela almost reveals that she snooped to the artifact room, but she quickly saves herself. Judy explains that all the artifact's room's things are haunted, cursed, or used in some ritualistic practice. Daniela then brings up the Annabelle doll, but Judy quickly drops the subject and remarks that the doll is in the case for a reason. Mary ends the snooping session and plays feely mealy with them instead. They're just starting when they hear the doorbell ring, so Mary leaves to get that. It's Bob. Mary explains to him that her parents don't allow her to have boys over. Bob understands this and explains that he just wanted to see her. After that, he leaves, so Mary giddily returns to her business. Later that night, while she's enjoying the show, the TV suddenly turns off. Judy looks at the coffee table where she left the remote, but it's not there anymore. She begins looking for it and finds it underneath the couch. She takes it, but then finds the Annabelle doll behind the couch. She double checks if the doll is indeed behind, but the lights suddenly go out. Daniela and Mary then show up, singing her a happy birthday while holding the cake. After the small celebration, Judy gives her birthday invitation to Daniela, to which she agrees to come. Their conversation gets interrupted when they hear Bob serenading Mary. The trio leaves the windows to come out of the house, but Bob runs his ass away in terror after being chased by the hellhound. The trio comes out seconds later, and they're confused to find that Bob's not there anymore. Mary dismisses her disappointment and instructs Judy to return to her bed. After that, she bids goodbye to Daniela and returns inside. Later, Mary shares with Judy that Daniela's dad died in a car accident. It was an accident, but Daniela blames herself for her dad's death because she was the driver at that time. As she walks away, Daniela hears the howling and barking of the dogs in the distance. She then remembers that she still has the keys, so she returns inside, using the back door. She goes down the hall to return the keys to the office, but she hears the artifact room door unlock by itself. She turns around and finds the room waiting for her to come in. She soon discovers the Annabelle doll is gone from the case. She then hears a thud behind her, and when she checks it, she finds the mourner's bracelet in a box. Daniela attempts to contact her dad through it, and she quickly succeeds. A presence moves the rocking chair, but then it's followed by the slamming of the door and the piano notes playing. Daniela panics and wants to leave immediately, but her dad shows up. She's shocked by his appearance, but it quickly turns into terror when her dad shouts at her, blaming her for his death. Daniela quickly runs to the door and repeatedly bangs on it, screaming for help while her wrathful dad comes after her. Meanwhile, Bob hides his smelly ass in the barn while the hellhound feeds on the chickens. After putting Judy to bed, Mary prepares a glass of milk and a piece of cake for herself. She leaves them on a table and cleans the mess in the kitchen when the glass moves by itself to the edge. The sound of the glass shattering catches her attention, and she's befuddled, as she's sure that she left it far from the edge. Although bewildered, she cleans it up, and while she's doing so, a song suddenly plays on the record. She quickly turns it off and wanders her eyes around the place when she hears the continuous creaking sound. She quickly goes to Judy to check on her, but she finds more than Judy on the bed. Beside Judy is the Annabelle doll, 
But Mary has no idea it's a conduit for spirits, so she dismisses its creepy-looking face and leaves the room. As she returns downstairs, she hears the sound of the television playing, which she ignores. While Daniela is trapped in the artifact room, an old television turns on by itself, showing her the future. She watches as the monkey toy behind her begins screeching as it falls to the ground. Daniela starts to panic, and tears fall to her cheeks as fear consumes her. Meanwhile, Mary pauses the TV when she hears a noise competing with it. She follows the sound, leading to the office down the hall, where she finds a playing recorded tape about the ferryman. She stops it when the lights suddenly go out, so she quickly takes the flashlight to see in the dark. The ferryman case catches her attention, and while she's looking at the pages, she hears the sound of the coins clattering. Mary follows where the sound came from, unaware that the ferryman is behind her. She returns upstairs, following the clattering of the coins, when the flashlight malfunctions. As she picks up a coin, the ferryman shows himself from the dark, prompting her to run. However, the ferryman drags her, but Mary quickly holds on to the room divider. She holds on tightly before taking the flashlight. Mary escapes the ferryman thanks to the flashlight, so she quickly runs to Judy's room and repeatedly calls her name. However, Judy is sound asleep. She just wakes up after being grabbed at the end of the bed by an unseen force. She looks around, only to find the Annabelle doll hiding underneath her blanket. Judy shoves the doll away in terror, accidentally knocking over the light lamp color. Judy watches through the lamp how Annabelle turns into a demon. Judy immediately leaves her bed and runs into Mary's arms, crying. They run away to escape as the demon snarls at them. However, they get trapped as they hear the hellhound growling outside. Mary sighs in relief as they receive a call from her mother. Lorraine notices the panic and fear in their voice, but a shiver goes down their spine upon hearing Lorraine wanting to talk to Annabelle. They realize that it's not their mother because the caller repeatedly tells them that Annabelle needs a soul. They then hear the bells ding, signaling that they're in the presence of not one but many spirits. Meanwhile, the haunted television shows a future, bloody, and screaming Daniela after answering a cursed telephone. The present Daniela isn't aware of this as she's too busy sobbing from intense fear. Not long after this vision, the cursed telephone rings. But fortunately, Judy and Mary come in and stop her before she can answer it. The duo has escaped the spirits attacking them, but the horror continues as the things Daniela touched before move or turn on by themselves. Judy informs them that Annabelle's doll's doing is the horror they're experiencing, and the doll wants a soul. This prompts Daniela to confess that she let out the doll and touched everything in the room because she wanted to apologize to her dad. As the terror continues, the trio rushes out before they get trapped. Mary suddenly experiences an asthma attack, so Judy quickly runs outside to get her inhaler. When Daniela runs after her, the bride attacks and possesses her. Meanwhile, Judy gets attacked by the hellhound, prompting her to rush out of the car and hurriedly return to the house. Right at that time, Bob finally shows up like a real man and smashes the fire extinguisher on the hellhound, causing it to disappear into thin air. Judy quickly gives Mary the inhaler, and as soon as her normal breathing returns, they notice that Danielle is missing. They then hear Daniela's voice calling out to Mary, but Judy quickly stops her and informs her that it's not Daniela anymore. Judy adds that they need to find Annabelle and put her back into the case. The priest's spirit then suddenly shows up, and unlike other spirits, his intention is good. He leads the two down the hall, where they pass by the haunted or cursed things in the artifact room. The priest shows them the Annabelle doll in the office closet. However, the door closes before Mary can take the doll, and to get the key, they need to play the feely-meely. Judy takes the risk, but a dark hallway lit by a lamp welcomes them when they open the closet. Mary goes in while Judy waits outside, praying for her and their safety. Mary finds numerous corpses with coins over their eyes, until she finds the Annabelle doll in the arms of her dead doppelganger. The light in the lamp suddenly goes out, and although terrified, Mary snatches the doll away from her doppelganger, who suddenly screams. Mary remains in the dark hallway, but she tosses the doll to Judy to return it to the case. However, Daniela suddenly shows up and starts attacking Judy, but Mary comes running and stops her before she can do harm. They engage in a struggle, and Daniela clearly dominates Mary, so Judy wires up a video record of Ed performing an exorcism. Judy runs as instructed by Mary, but a hand from the feely meely grabs her foot. Judy frees herself and promptly runs to the artifact room, while Daniela gets exercised. Judy almost returns the doll to the glass, but the demon stops her and begins taking her soul. Mary comes in shortly after and gets terrorized by the cursed Japanese samurai. Judy grabs a cross and fights the demon with it. She frees herself from its grip, and Mary quickly returns the doll to the glass, but the door won't close. 
As the doll attracts more spirits, Daniela comes running, helps Mary closes the door, and quickly locks it. The terror stops as the evil is contained, and the disturbed spirits return to their slumbers. The trio reunites with the shitty Bob, who fortunately survives the Hellhound's attacks. The following day, the trio quickly informs Ed and Lorraine about what happened as soon as they return home. Days later, Judy cannot hide her sadness, as no one attended her birthday party. Ed and Lorraine try their best to comfort their little daughter. But what cheers her up is when Daniela, Mary, and Bob come to their house along with the other kids. Lorraine takes Daniela down to the artifact room, and returns the picture of her dad that she put in the mourner's bracelet. It turns out, Daniela's dad had contacted Lorraine to tell Daniela that his death was not her fault. Daniela apologizes for her mistake, and Lorraine gladly accepts it because she knows what it's like to be a teenager. The two return upstairs, where they celebrate Judy's birthday. The film ends with a photograph of the real Warren family, and a dedication note for the late Lorraine. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.